Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, wherever you are in the world. Welcome to Cody's Radio Workshop. On the bench, we don't have a radio, but we do have some radio-related um, papers and a book. I picked these up uh, from eBay, went to pick them up. Uh, it was a local thing. Uh, this is the History of Robert's Radio tidy little book. I have several versions of this. I've got a red one and a green one. They're essentially the same and just give you all of the history about uh, Robert's Radio, where they started and what their uh, what their plans were really. They're essentially the same book, uh, regardless which colour you get. There are just like, special editions. It's basically, if you need one of these or if you want one of these, it doesn't matter what colour you get, just just get one and have a read. It's all the same information inside. And that's the history of Robert's Radio. I think this one was about 1987, the blue one. Uh, the green one was a anniversary edition, but all the pictures, all the text, everything is the same. Uh, yeah, it's down there, 1987. Um, pretty good read. It gives you an idea of uh, where they started and the struggles that they went through to get the brand off the ground. And uh, once they did get it off the ground and they got it up and running, it... Uh, it went really well until Dab came along and then it took a dive and I think everybody's aware of my feelings for Dab. But yeah, all of this paperwork here in this bundle I bought as a lot on eBay. Went to pick it up as I say locally. A uh, lovely woman. Uh, came from kind of a silent key type of, of sale. Their neighbour was a Roberts enthusiast and uh, sadly has passed away. Uh, so the neighbour was tasked with uh, parting ways with uh, some of the things. Uh, these cropped up in a listing with some actual radios, uh, but all that I was interested in, because I've many and several radios as everybody's aware, all I was interested in was these original paperwork. So, without any further ado, this uh, this first one here was the supplement to the electrical and electronic trader and that was the 11th of December 1970. This is a tradish service sheet 1962 and it's for the Roberts R707. Obviously that's, um, where are we, that must be A3 size uh, folded out. Obviously it folds over into kind of A4, opens up into A3. Um, and just the feel of the paper. So this this is actually going to probably turn into another read along with Cody's. Um, the first one was quite popular. A lot of you guys out there appreciate these things, you know, pretty much as much as I do. But to have the actual original data sheet, really, um, is priceless. There we go. With the Mullard extended guarantee, you just can't lose. Yeah, all the modules nowadays. That is for TVs, but that that title there just made me smile. Um, so we've got the Trader Sheet 1962 continued um, on this side here. I will be having a, a proper look at these uh, over the coming days and filing them away in my folders. Um, probably... Uh, probably compare them to the other types of sheets I've got. I've got the digitals, I've got uh, the RTVS books. I'll compare them to those and see see what the comparison's like. Now this next one I was really blown away with. Um, it's an orig original letter from Roberts Radio Company in West Molesley uh, to the service manager it doesn't say the service manager of where, but it's about the battery consumption on the Roberts R24. Uh, I will read it out to you, although you can probably pause it and read it yourselves if you wish, but uh, it's Dear Sir, battery consumption on the Model R24. We regret to advise you that some samples of Model R24 receivers prior to serial number 6911 are fitted with 2K2 resistor across the output of the mains power supply which has the effect of reducing the expected battery life. 
This resistor R333 should be removed. It is however important that C351, the 1000 microfarad smoothing capacitor, is rated at 16 volts. Should the capacitor be rated below 16 volts, it should be replaced and a free of charge replacement will be re supplied by return of post or telephone call. This modification is easily carried out by removing the power supply unit which is held in by one screw. May we suggest that you check your stock of any receivers prior to serial number 6911 and modify where necessary. Would you also kindly advise your selling staff of this matter? We sincerely apologise for any inconvenience caused to you or your customers and in anticipation thank you for your cooperation. Yours faithfully. Now this is a genuine signature on here. Let me zoom down and so that is G. V. Dixon Nuttall who was the technical director. Um, I found it tricky at first to uh, work out the Dixon Nuttall but uh, it is there uh, and the G. V. was illegible but it is his signature so it's just nice to have an original letter apologising for uh, fitting the wrong resistors on the uh, headed notepaper. Pretty nice. And then we come along to the um, issued with the British Radio and Television October 1955 and this is a test report for the Roberts CR model uh, or now this wasn't part of a magazine, it is an actual mini sheet uh, about the, the above ana valve analysis was obtained with the gang capacitor so these are their test reports but it does have circuit details, the alignment procedure and the removal of the chassis on there um, service snaps for the Roberts model CR so you've got a valve listing, the IF frequency um, the electrolytics, wave bands and the voltage input down there. Just a nice thing to have and we're now on to the um, ILIF electrical publications 1961 this is Trader Service Sheet 1484 and this is the original sheet for the RT7. Now we've got the ERT radio trading service chart and this is for the Roberts R55 this folds out so it's A4 size but you open it up and got some more that I do like the adverts I do love the old adverts um, got one here for an output transformer uh, from Radio Spares Limited obviously no longer in operation um, but yeah they're just fantastic fantastic references and as with uh, anything vintage you just can't buy them anymore so this is a service data sheet um, for the Roberts R77 which is a portable radio receiver uh, but which is actually a valve set I do have one of these um, and it is in nice condition although one of the uh, zips it's got a zip at the top and a zip at the bottom one of the zips uh, just refuses to move now and I've tried all sorts I really don't want to force it because it looks lovely but it is a working set um, but again the service data sheet for the Roberts R77 the circuit diagram on the back and how to dismantle it they always put how to dismantle it though I never understood this kind of at the end of each of the service data sheets they've got the alignment procedure and the circuit details the servicing notes but they don't tell you how to take it apart until the end I never fully understood that. The Roberts R404, again, original desk sheet, um, issued with the Radio and Electrical Retailing Service Engineer, April 1965. Um, the release date there and the original price, uh, 1965 and 17 guineas. But it's got the, uh, the voltages and let's get it the right way around, shall we? That would help. Um, yeah, I, sh I shan't dwell on each one, but uh, and then we've come to the uh, second and third main versions of the Roberts R200. Again, it's an A4, which folds out to A3. 
uh, Electrical Trader, 25th of May 1963. The Roberts R200, these are the later versions, not the original version, which I think is coming next. There it is. Um, they're just fantastic, fantastic things to have. So, I mean, this is the circuit diagram of the second main version, starting at serial number 36,547 and continuing up to number 70,000. Um, and it has a list of, somewhere, the modifications. Uh, where does it? This version comprises the original one of service sheet 1449 and all the modifications to it described overleaf with certain other additions. So we've got modifications from serial number 85,690. An additional resistor of 330 ohms is inserted between the junction of X2C23 and the top of volume control R14. And from serial number 90,000, C4 is omitted. Uh, we've got the base bias adjustments for certain serial numbers, the circuit alignments for numbers above 70,000. So, yeah, again, an original reference. This is the original Roberts R200 before those modifications were carried out, and this was issued 28th of May 1960. Again, all original, not photocopied, not... Uh, It's a BRT test report for the Roberts model R66. And the valve voltage and current data on there. I will have to uh, compare these sheets to the actual technical references. Right, now we're getting on to uh, what I particularly wanted um, because I spotted them in the eBay listing. I've got the Roberts RSR100 service manual. It is the fully original manual which opens out in all sorts of weird and wonderful ways uh, to create the exploded views of the circuitry inside. Now you can get the RSR100 service data uh, in the RTVS books. I can't remember which year it is off the top of my head but uh, it's not as good as this. It's uh, this is fantastic. Got some handwriting on the back. Mr. Griffith's receipts returned. Phone Pratt's six double zero five from Gina. So that's the Roberts RSR one hundred, and then we've got the uh, smaller, more common RSR fifty. Now this does open up to I think it's A two, so it's a massive, massive sheet. Uh, but again, invaluable. Uh, the RSR50 is also in the RTVS books, but to have it in such detail and exploded view on such a large piece of paper is priceless. Right, these are the original um, technical datas for lots of different models, so I'll just briefly go through these. I don't want to make this video too long. Um, but there's just a magic about having the original system. I've mentioned this before in the original read-along with Cody's. The feel of the paper, there's a gloss to the paper. Uh, the um, diagrams are often coloured so you can see the traces on the boards. Uh, somebody has actually handwritten in there what the module numbers are. So we've got the LP1186, the LP1185 and the LP1181 uh, handwritten on, which is uh, obviously something that Robert's omitted, but somebody thought would be useful to actually handwrite on there. They've also circled R87, and they've also annotated on R58. So that's for the RM50. Um, particularly nice radio actually. Then we've got the RM20. I think there's an RM30 in this list as well. So we've got the RM20, the RM50 so far. Again technical data. This one isn't quite uh, so big. Um, it's not such a complicated radio to, to service. But uh, I have one of these two, one of these radios, and uh, it's particularly sensitive. Uh, it's only medium wave, long wave. 
whereas the uh, R R50 is also VHF. The Roberts RT22, I've just repaired uh, two of those in the last couple of weeks. Um, just a fantastic reference to have. Like I say, they're A4, but because they're linked and it's just one sheet, they're so much easier to work from. The Roberts Rig 2, this is just one sheet. Um, it is the original sheet and there is a little bit of uh, tear in there. But the details all there, you know, the devil's in the detail. Uh, so everything that we need to see is there. There's obviously no written uh, reference other than what's actually on the front. Uh, so I believe that there will be another part of this and I don't have. The RFM3, I love the RFM3. Had such fun with the RFM3s on uh, Radio Cruncher's live stream, um, where I did the uh, two radios and then brought them home afterwards and polished them up and we did the giveaway. Um, it's a particularly nice and particularly capable set with the three ICs, um, which all got changed on both of those sets. But I digress, this is about the technical data sheets. So we've got the RFM3, I already have a copy of that one. Here's the RM40. Look at that, that is shocking pink. Uh, that's almost day glow. Don't have this one, well I do now. Um, but yeah, look at that, it's shockingly pink. Love it. Again, I didn't have uh, this original one, I did have a copy of it, but obviously now I've got the original one, I'm particularly happy. Again, you just fold out and it's all there, all big, uh, easier to follow than the uh, photocopies. Robert's Rambler, uh, this is the original one with the square wave change buttons. Uh, obviously, again, the technical data sheets. Already have this one too. Um, but. Uh, Swiftly moving on, we've got the Roberts R505. This feels, this paper feels a lot thicker, almost akin to card. But uh, open it up, and again, we've got the huge ability to reference from that. Um, a lot easier to spot while you're actually working on a set rather than squinting or popping your glasses on or getting your magnifier out to read what's on the service data. They are fantastic, fantastic things. The R800 from serial number 7051. Uh, I think the other R800 is in there. I've already got that one too. The R900 original. I don't know if I've already got the original for this one, but we've also got, and this is what I particularly like, the modification sheet. Um, now these are the original ones which will have been gestetnered and uh, sent out to the uh, suppliers um, to do with the uh, modifications. Again, A4 but folds out to A2. But there we've got the R900 on off and power supply modifications telling you what to do and what to carry out and they are a fantastic original reference. I am aware of the modification already for the R900 and I have carried that out on a number of occasions um, with the information that I found on various forums but uh, the to have the original modification sheet I'm blown away. This is the R606 and the R606MB again folds out particularly nice good condition been folded down the middle that one but uh, not a problem it's just nice and clear and bright this is the R606 this was up to a certain serial number and I can't remember what that was maybe it uh, might tell us somewhere because we've got the 606 and the 606 MB but then we've also got the 606 I'll have to check that out because I'm not actually aware of uh, any differences between those two sheets. So I will have a look at that at, uh, at some point and just see if there is anything markedly different. Yeah, this is the original Roberts R800. 
Uh, we did have, didn't we, the other R800 technical data. There we go. So this one is from 7051 and obviously this orange one here is up to 7051. Uh, I don't know. They're just fantastic, fantastic things to have and they actually feel good in your hand. The Roberts technical data for the R600. Now, I think I do actually have this one, but this is a different design. It has been repaired and put back together, but it is all there. I mean, this was once upon a time, this was probably clear sellotape, uh, but it's yellowed with, with time. But that's the uh, original for the Roberts R600. Don't know if I've got that one. Ah, there we go. There was the RM30 as well. The RM30 being a VHF set as well, because we had the RM20, was it, earlier on the sheets. Um, so the VHF model, uh, the the first one of this design to have was the RM30 and the RM33. Then you've got the RM40, the RM50. But again, just that's pristine. Absolutely fantastic. One other thing that I did notice, apart from the uh, card there, was this folder um, that they've been given to me in uh, is a original Roberts folder, Roberts Radio, somebody's handwritten on their RM series, but it does say at the bottom, catalogue information. Um, so maybe that was for an original, now I don't have an original catalogue but if I just reach over to one of the shelves over here and I take that out of there, this will be one of the type of catalogues although that's slightly too big. I have all sorts of catalogues and references but I don't have probably what was in there because it won't have been for the RM series originally. It will have been catalogue information, probably for parts, spares, some such. But yeah, um, that is just another kind of a, a brief read along with Cody's for the data sheets, uh, service data sheets, technical references, and the book. Um, absolutely invaluable things to have. I do have a folder, as I say, with the I mean, look how thick that is now with the data sheets. Got the RC2030 there. I'm not going to dwell on that. I did have the original Rambler, um, so that one might be available. I've got the Rambler 2, uh, the RFM3, already got that one as well. R24, uh, that's the one that the letter refers to for uh, changing the uh, parts. Uh, the wrong resistor. But anyway, I don't want to dwell too long. This was just kind of a show and tell for what I picked up from eBay locally. The stuff is still out there, it's getting harder to find. I don't like to use the word rare because I'm sure there are tens of thousands of these things still out there somewhere um, that people are probably unaware of, hiding in cupboards and drawers and things from relatives from days gone by. But when they do surface, I tend to jump on them straight away. Um, they're so much better than the photocopies. The photocopies are, are brilliant if you haven't got the originals, but the originals, they really rock my boat. Anyway, there we go. Thanks for watching. If you like what you've seen, click like. If uh, you haven't already subscribed, subscribe. There's more to come, more radios to come on onto the bench. I've been to Goldbourne um, Swap Meet uh, this last weekend. And I've picked up many, many, many and several radios and related bits and pieces. Uh, so they will be appearing on the bench shortly. So if you don't already subscribe and that sort of thing floats your boat, subscribe. Um, there will be, uh, as I said, many and several videos coming up shortly. Um, and thank you very much for watching. Uh, I only ever started doing these videos as a reference for myself, but I've got a... A growing following on YouTube now which has tipped over the 100 subscribers mark thank you very much um, it keeps my dream alive floats my boat
makes me happy, makes me want to do more. So, yeah, thanks again for watching, and I will catch you in the next one. Bye for now.